Today, I urge my colleagues to support a bipartisan compromise that will speed three top economic priorities to the president's desk. An extension of lower student loan rates, reform of the National Flood Insurance Program, NFIP, and a long-term transportation bill. All three face tight statutory deadlines. If Congress doesn't act, federal student loan rates will double from 3.4 to 6.8 percent after this weekend. And federal highway funds will expire, interrupting job creation in the middle of a busy construction season. Finally, at the end of July, the National Flood Insurance Program is set to expire, delaying home sales closings and wreaking havoc on a fragile housing recovery. That is the last thing Americans want uh, to happen, to have dramatic last-minute standoffs on critical legislation. That's why I've been working across the aisle on these issues for months. Last July, the House first passed my bill, H.R. 1309, on flood insurance. We worked carefully with stakeholders from every corner of the country, and today that legislation provides the basis for Title II of this agreement. It will restore financial security to the flood program, yielding savings for taxpayers and stability in the housing market. In early May, the House also passed my bill, H.R. 4628, the Interest Rate Reduction Act, to freeze low rates on federal student loans for an additional year. And since February, I've been fighting alongside a small but dedicated group of my suburban colleagues, especially Democrat Dan Lipinski and Republican Bob Dole to advance bipartisan compromise on the Senate's version of a pending highway bill. Today I'm pleased to report that these efforts have paid off. Our compromise will avert the need for another short-term extension of road funds, and it gives Illinois transportation managers the long-term certainty to invest in the road and rail projects that will create jobs. By preventing a rate hike on college loans, it also ensures that college students won't have to pay the price for gridlock in Washington. Half of all recent grads are unemployed or underemployed, and the last thing they need is another financial burden. All these bills required tough choices and difficult compromises on both sides of the aisle. But that's how good policy must be made. And this final package shows that even in a harsh political climate, we can work across the aisle to promote economic growth. So today, I encourage my colleagues to look at this big picture and lend this agreement their strong support. And by the end of this week, I hope we can get all three priorities over the finish line.